Friday nights. Back on the gridiron. A new season, a new chance to be the last team standing and hoist the gold ball. From Maine's total coverage, this is the Blitz 8 Preview Show. Here's Sports Director Travis Lee. Oh, well, good evening and welcome to our Blitz 8 High School Football Preview Show. We anticipate another great season on the gridiron and we're here to get you in the mood for it. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll introduce you to some of the top players, top teams, and my offensive coordinator tonight, the one and only Michael Hoffer, joining me in studio to break down the upcoming season. Now, one team that just could not wait to start its season, the Winthrop Monmouth Haldale Co-op. At the strike of midnight on August 19th, the first practice of the year, happening at midnight as they began their preseason with a midnight madness practice. Our coach Stone showed us that and like we saw the schedule we're like is this right is he really mean this or are we thinking about 12 01 p.m. like we just didn't we didn't know what was going on but now that we actually figured out that we're having a practice out here we're really really excited just to do this. Now as we start the season six schools enter the year as defending champions Thornton, Kennebunk, Levitt, Wells, MDI and Orono in the eight man division. Now, Thornton Academy captured its sixth title of the millennium last November by beating Portland. Of Thornton's nine regular season games last year, they played an undefeated team seven times. That's an incredibly tough schedule. With six first team all league players returning this year, including quarterback Wyatt Benoit, the Golden Trojans looked like they could be in a good position to repeat. Oh, well, we no expectations are high, but like we just gotta keep working and keep like bring energy and try to fulfill those expectations that we have. I feel like it's a new season, whole new script, and we got to play like we didn't win last year. All right, so already thinking gold ball. The locations for the state championship have been announced. The A and B title game will remain at Fitzpatrick Stadium in Portland. The C and D championships will be at Lewiston High School again, all on November 23rd. And the eight-man championships will go down to Kennebunk High School a week earlier on November 16th. Now injuries are a part of the game. Some key players suffered injuries at different points of last season and in the offseason and they're returning to play, especially in the wide receiver ranks. Trevor Garrish of Brunswick, Ryan Camary of Thornton, CJ Cooper, Bonnie Eagle, Max Andrews of Kennebunk, figuring to be impact players who were coming back this year. Cooper played just two full games last year before he tore his ACL. He told us he's feeling better every day. It's been a really long process, really uh, hard mentally, um, but I've surrounded myself with a good uh, you know, group of people that's helping me keep my head up, help me work through everything, um, and really just like staying positive through it all. Now, on the injury topic, concussions are a big part of the game, and preventing them has been a priority the past decade. And with that in mind, the Guardian caps being worn by pro and college teams are filtering down to Maine where several schools wore them in the preseason. You can even see them in the regular season as the MPA has no rule prohibiting their use during regular season games. You hit with your head and you don't feel anything. I mean, it's, you, it's a lot safer, a lot safer, you can tell. We play with it in our scrimmage, actually, and every, no one had no head injuries. All right, for the best in high school football coverage throughout the season, join us Friday nights at 11 o'clock on WMTW for Blitz 8. All the storylines and key plays on Blitz 8, you got to be there to check it out. All right, moving on, the North won both eight-man football titles a year ago. In the large school division, MDI used a strong defensive effort to beat Greeley 28 to nothing. And in the small school game, Orno avenged a 2022 state title loss against Old Orchard, beating the Gulls 46 to 18. There's yet to be a repeat champ since eight man started in 2019 and bringing in our he's not our backup quarterback, but uh, our I don't know, our, our highly anticipated, highly recruited prospect. Uh, Michael Hoffer is going to ride shotgun with me tonight here. And we're going to start with eight man Michael where anything seems to happen in this. You had a couple upsets for teams getting in in the large school and coming back this year, Mount Ararat with a Fitzy candidate and Dash Farrell as they enter the season looking strong and other contenders in that large school division too. Yeah, Travis, great to be back with you again. And if I'm going to be a backup quarterback, I hope I'm Drake May and I hope I'm going to get in there as soon as possible. But uh, excited for football season, as I know you are too. And eight-man football has just been so exciting to watch, especially the last couple of years. You, that run that Greeley had a year ago coming off a winless season and making a run to the state final where the Cinderella run finally ended in the state game. But, you know, with the Andrew Padgett back at quarterback, Wes Piper, 
these are big time, big game players. I know Greeley's going to make another run at it, even though they lost some key kids. And then Yarmouth, I mean, the last couple of years, two years ago, they won the state game on that dramatic last minute drive. Last year, it looked like they were going back behind Michael McGonigal and his million yards rushing. He had three, 400 yards every game, it seemed like. And then they got upset by Brunswick. So, I mean, you've got a lot of excitement there, and Old Orchard certainly back in it. You've got to figure that Old Orchard Orono might be on another collision course. So, you know, some of the teams might be familiar, but if we've learned anything from eight man in recent years is that there's a lot of surprises along the way. The only thing better than a rematch is a three match. If you get Orono <laughs> Old Orchard again, that would be epic. Riley Preventure coming back to that. Old Orchard team, 20 touchdowns through the air, the ground. He's like the Paul Revere. No matter what way it was coming, he was getting into the end zone. And also West Galan, another key skill guy that they'll have back. But that Orno team loaded as well with Jack Brewer leading the way, their quarterback coming back. And one interesting thing with the eight man this year is that they can play out of division. So you'll get some of those small schools playing large schools in the regular season, which uh, could shape, uh, could be an interesting way of uh, creating some uh, Great matchups during the regular season in the eight man division. Now in 2019, eight man was created as a way of giving smaller schools or programs with decreasing numbers a chance to play the game. Some programs have yet to see growth or rebound in numbers, but this fall, five schools will emerge from eight man to play conventional 11 man football. Ready to go. The Class D division will be bolstered with schools like Deerago, Mountain Valley, Miranda Cook, and Mattanaw Cook going from 8-man to 11-man. I wanted to go 11-man. From freshman year, our coach told us that our goal is to go to 11-man, at least senior year, and now we're here. The transition to 11-man will bring back some old Campbell Conference rivalries. You know, I felt going back to Class D self, you know, normal rec competition we've had in the past, you know, with the Winthrop's and the Lisbon's and those schools and with Mount Valley. You know, so I thought it was just a good move. A proud 11 man program before their numbers dipped into the low 20s. Mountain Valley's community paved the way for a return to 11 man. At the end of the 2022 season, I challenged the parents and players in the audience and said, if you don't like it, come out and play. I, I can't fix it. It's going to be us together. And they did. We had 51 yesterday morning. We uh, have a big history here of, of 11 man football and domination. So we're, we're hoping to go back to that. Brunswick moves to C South after a season in eight man, a season where some pretty talented players were relegated to being role players. I think it's probably because last year we had a couple of talented guys who couldn't really get on the field. So now like our, our skill positions are super good. So now we have three more spots to fill. While the game is still blocking and tackling, there'll be a transition for the players and coaches. You do more scheme in eight man, 11 man football than eight man. Eight man is more man to man. It's like basketball on grass. Uh, 11 man football is, uh, it's really chess. It's chess with live pieces. And that's the part I love, you know, so you get a game plan, you set it. And if I make a mistake, I got athletes that can make up for it. All right, turning our attention to Class D and some of those newcomers like Mountain Valley, Miranda Cook and Deergo, they're all going to be chasing down Wells, the defending champs. A thrilling state championship comeback as Wells beat Foxcroft trailing 21 nothing at the half, taking the lead with 24 seconds left as Foxcroft was going for a three-peat. And when you talk Class D this year, you have a rapidly expanding Class D from eight teams to a year ago to 13 this year, uh, or to last year, that is 17 this year. Foxcroft was a big favorite a year ago, and I think maybe Wells is the favorite this year. Yeah, I mean, it seems like we're always talking about those two teams, Travis and Wells. Uh, some familiar names, certainly Eli Potter, the third in his family to, uh, to come through. And, you know, Jonah and Nolan were great players, too, fullback linebackers. Wells is looking for a quarterback, so that's a big hole to fill. But they do have several starters back on both sides of the ball. And until someone proves otherwise, I think the road to the title goes through Wells. Uh, you know, Freeport, they're hoping for better health this year. Um, I look at them maybe as a team that could make a run. But, you know, all things considered, I, when we get to November, I think we're going to be talking about Wells again. Taking a look at Kai Taylor or Oak Hill there. They gave Winthrop a run in the regional semifinal and Winthrop's going to be strong with Braden Brannigan back at quarterback and they have an all league lineman Barrett Perkins who has a torn ACL and is hoping to be ready by the end of the season to help them make a run and Deer go strong with a weapon in Nathaniel uh, Wainwright as a 6-4 wide receiver that we were talking about earlier. These receivers just keep getting bigger and bigger and what a story would be of Mountain Valley. Right. could recapture some of its glory and, and be relevant this year as well. All right, let's move on. Our games of the year from last year. Well, let's check out some of the epic battles that went on. Good battle between Massabesic and the Noble Knights. Knights quarterback Jameer Rose leads Noble on a two-minute drill to pull off a 29-23 win. 
Lewiston and South Portland tied with 10 seconds to go, and Michael Karen converts the field goal to give the Blue Devils the win. Northern A Regional Final, who could forget Oxford Hills and Portland tied with 30 seconds to go. Cordell Jones out of the Wildcats. See you later. 70-yard touchdown. Put the Bulldogs in the state final. In the Southern Sea Championship between Freiburg and Levitt, the Raiders led 32-21 in the third, but Noah Carpenter leads the comeback. Five touchdowns and the game ceiling pick as Levitt goes on to win the state championship after that win. All right, more Blitz 8 Preview Show is back after this.